And welcome back to Taper John. How are we doing today? Waiting on Bob Wiegand to show up right now. And just waiting. Waiting for everybody to sync up, so. There he is. Let me switch the cameras. Right here, and that's from Bill's Bar right here. Down in Merrill. And he was oh, kind enough to, uh, to offer to host a watch party from his Bill's Bar page. So I'm trying to get that fired up here. I'm not sure if that's gonna work or not, we'll see. But thank you guys for joining me. I'm excited to play some songs for you guys. Rob, how you doing? That's working. And I apologize, right. I was talking, I didn't have my mic Good turned enough, up. Right? But it's up now. Okay. So Bob's here. So I want to get this up on my screen. I'm, I'm fiddling with my laptop over here. I want to get this up on the screen so I can see comments when you guys are, um, when you guys are dropping them here. That's half the fun for me is, is seeing you guys popping in and saying hi. So, oh, John Taper, John's taping. Thank you, buddy. Awesome, awesome. Okay. Well, I'm excited. I got some. Uh, I got some new songs for you guys. Um, I've been uh, been busting my tail over the last couple weeks. I um, I finished up some originals that I'm gonna I'm gonna drop on you guys tonight, and um, a handful of other fun ones that I dug out. So in the meantime, while I'm just getting the last of this stuff fired up, um, again, I want to give a shout out to Bill's Bar here. He's a good friend, and he he runs Bill's Bar um, out uh, between Maryland and Anago. And uh, speaking of busting his ass, he's been busting ass, uh, keeping keeping people fed. He's uh, obviously he's running a bar, so he can't have patrons in right now. But he's doing doing Friday fish fries and and you know uh, bar food and stuff like that. Um, so make sure you guys uh, drop him a line, hit him up. He's got all kinds of great food, and he just he's got a drive up window, so you don't even have to go in there or anything like that. Um, pop over there, tell him hi, get some stuff. I'm sure he'd appreciate it. And I saw too my friends at Birchwood here in Rhinelander. They're running a special tonight. They're doing a Friday fish fry, and I saw something about free wontons or something like that. So that would be something to uh, something to investigate. All right, I think we're ready, guys. We're doing it. Welcome back to another uh, another solo live stream. Thank you guys for uh, popping in. Cheers to all you guys at home. If uh, if you guys feel like tipping or, or dropping donations or anything like that, I put um, the info, the PayPal, and the Venmo info in the description. Uh, for this video. So this, this video is being streamed off Northwoods Live. Um, so you should be able to see it in the description for the video. Um, otherwise, drop me a line. You can drop me a message or something like that after the fact or whatever if you, if you can't find the info. Um, but you know what I'll do? I'll go ahead and copy and paste the info in a comment that I think I can then pin so you guys can see it. So let's do that real quick here. Thank you. No, 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 not that. All right. There, I think I did it. Okay. 
So if you guys, uh, if you guys are, feel, if you feel so inclined, you know, again, I, uh, I appreciate, I super, super appreciate any tips and donations, but, um, I know a lot of folks are in a tight spot right now. So if you're, if you're paying bills, feeding the family, don't sweat it. Um, tips are appreciated, but never expected or required or anything like that. So, um, I'm just happy that you guys are here. Brian, what's up, dude? I miss you. All right, I'm gonna start off with some songs on the old Irish bazooki here. Um, I, had, I had planned on um, busting out all my instruments tonight, but I have a I have an injury on my finger that's gonna keep me um, keep me from doing any finger picking today. So it's all flat picking, but uh, we're gonna make it work. Um, you know what? I'm gonna start off with a rancid song. I think that's what I'm gonna kick the night off with tonight. That's uh, that's kind of what I'm feeling. I've been playing this one, banging around on it for a couple weeks, and. It's fun. This this takes me back to high school. This is uh, um, my first my first ever band. My first ever you know playing music with any other people outside of my bedroom as a teenager was a shitty little punk band I had in high school. None of us knew how to play anything at all, um, and it was great. It's some of the best times of my life. I'll never forget it. And uh, the one guy in the band who could actually who actually could play was our, our bass player Chet. And he was, he was just amazing because he could play every Rancid song. We'd hang out and I would just look, just sit and watch him, my jaw on the floor as he'd play Matt Freeman bass lines along to, you know, playing along the CDs and stuff. So Rancid was a staple. I'm, I'm pretty sure we played like every song off of An Outcome the Wolves in that, in that band. And, uh, so that was kind of what, what I cut my teeth on. So here's a Rancid song. <laughs> song to get the get the jitters out you know kind of get underway thank you guys Whew. yeah and like I uh, like I mentioned in my last live stream here um, you'll have to bear with me for just a second while I get this bad boy tuned 
uh, this this Irish bazooki, that's what I'm playing here. Um, sensitive to tuning issues, especially when you beat the piss out of it like I do. You're probably not supposed to play it like that. But I want to make sure it's uh, it sounds good for you guys, so give me just two seconds. Um, for those of you who don't know, the Irish bazooki, um, it can be configured and tuned in a couple different ways. I have it tuned uh, like a mandolin right now, uh, the same intervals. Um, but obviously it's it's bigger, you know, it's, uh, it's a longer scale length, the length, length of the neck is bigger. Um, and also, like a mandolin, it has unison strings, so I don't know if you can see it there, um, but it's got four courses of unison strings. Um, and I actually, on the lowest course down here, instead of unison strings, I, uh, I made that an octave string, which kind of gives it a kind of a nice jangly kind of exotic sound. I kind of like it. Colleen, how you doing? Thanks for stopping by. Um, so yeah, it's, uh, it's configured a little bit differently than maybe your traditional Irish bazooki. Um, but I kind of like it. I, I like that, um, that octave string on the lowest set. It, um, for one, I think it sounds cool. For two, the main reason I did it that way is because with my kind of sloppy, aggressive right hand, um, it would pop out of the bridge, the, uh, the big wound string. So the smaller diameter string helps keep it tight there. All right. So that first one was an old, old punk rock song. Um, that kind of goes back to my high school days. And this next one is uh, also um, also kind of harkens back to those early days in my um, when I was kind of cutting my teeth playing music and learning music and going to see my first concerts and stuff like that. Um, and this one was, uh, I'm going to play a Flogging Molly song because this song um, came off their first album, which was a big one for me. You know, I first heard it. And I, I, you know, vaguely familiar with Irish music a little bit, but never really got into it, never really listened to it that much. And this was an Irish band that sounded, you know, had, used a lot of the traditional instrumentation. They had accordions and, you know, fiddles and tin whistles and stuff like that. Um, but definitely a, a punk rock feel, punk rock background. And they were, um, at the time, they were playing with a lot of punk rock bands, you know, touring in those circles and stuff like that, with a lot of, like, the the fat rack bands and the epitaph bands and stuff like that in the, you know, the late nineties, early two thousands. Um, and I got to see them, I got to see them a couple times and they were so much fun. I saw them at a warp tour. Um, my, my first and only warp tour I ever went to flogging Molly was the last band to play. And so everybody from all the other stages, the whole, everybody, all the, the attendees all piled up to, you know, in front of this main stage for this final set. And they were just, you can imagine I was standing way, way in the back. I felt like I was a mile away from the stage and thousands of people in front of me. And it wasn't like a dance circle, you know, like at a typical concert where you've got the people front and center and they're dancing and moving. Everybody else is kind of standing there watching. It was this whole sea of people, thousands of people. And ev the whole mass was dancing. Everybody it was so cool. And I was, you know, 16, 17. It was mind blown. And then I got to see him when I went to college up in Duluth. I walked from my on-campus apartments over to this Christian college campus that was nearby, and they were playing there, and got rowdy. Rowdy as hell. It was so much fun. But this song I'm going to do, this is not one of their more rowdy ones. This is definitely one of their songs that, uh, to me, it, you know, it sounds a lot more country. And, and at that point in my life, I was just completely opposed to anything twangy, anything country. I was like, ugh, yeah. Just for whatever reason, turn to turn me off. This was pre bluegrass, and uh, this was one of the songs that started to warm me back up to that kind of twangy sound and the the country themes and and songs about you know uh, being bummed out, songs about heartbreak, stuff like that. You know, those are not subjects that you hear about in punk rock songs a lot. And for a teenager, you don't really get into that. But then. You know, once you get in your 20s and late teens and stuff, you, you kind of start to feel those those more personal songs a little bit. And so this was one of those that started to warm me up to that direction of things. Um, 
the worst day since yesterday. Molly number there. Taking it back to the old days. Whew. Cheers, you guys. Thank you all so much for stopping by and hanging out with me tonight. This is, um, I've, I've said it a few times now. I think I, I do a, a live stream every Wednesday with my good buddy, Scott Kirby. And, um, this has become the highlight of my week, the live streams th that we get to do. This is, um, you know, I, I'm accustomed to playing, you know, minimum 150 shows a year, you know, like an average of at least three shows a week going out, hitting the road. Um, usually, you know, more like, especially this time of year, once we start getting into summer season, it's like four or five shows a week. I'm, I'm living on the road 
and you know playing shows constantly and I'm not anymore and it's rough it's hard it's so hard this this takes some getting used to and so right now this is my only outlet to play music I've been playing a lot I've been working a lot on songs um, I've been writing a lot of songs been working on you know learning stuff for these live streams um, but this is my only outlet to share it with you guys um, and it's it's kind of weird, you know, when you're when you're in the rhythm of playing shows all the time, you kind of forget how important that is. Like, what an important part of music it is to share it. You know, like you, you think it's you can start to think that it's for yourself. You know, I play music t to keep me happy, and that you know you forget how important the feedback and the interaction is. And so, um, having been without that for a while, this is how I get that now. And so, I, I thank you guys. For giving me this opportunity to uh, to share songs with you guys and kind of interact a little bit, this is it means the world. Like this is super super cool, and it uh, basically provides the only structure in my whole week right now. So you know that helps. <laughs> oh man, oh I got a fun one. Kind of sticking with the Irish theme here for a second. So my band dig deep. Um. <laughs> We have a little number that we like to do. Um, <laughs> if you've seen us before, you've seen us do this song a million times, I'm sure. Um, but it's a song... Um, a lot of people know it from the Titanic soundtrack. However, that's not how I found this song, I, in, in my defense. Not, I, you know, Titanic, great film, not going to knock it. But I learned this song um, when I had discovered a band called Gaelic Storm, um, who does awesome, fun, upbeat, rowdy Irish music. Um, they play at Big Top Chautauqua almost every year, I think. And I've been wanting to get up there and check them out. Jim, what's up? How you doing? Um, but I, uh, I discovered this song years ago. And I've mentioned before, too, I'm just, when it comes to learning songs, I've always been lousy at learning songs note for note. Um, learning them, you know, learning them right. Just, I, I, I would learn, like, the outline. I'd learn, like, the gist of it, and then I'd kind of fake it through the rest, you know? And this was one of those songs, one of the few songs that I thought, like, you know, the, this little section that I learned was cool. I was like, okay, I want to I learn that a little bit. I'm gonna, and so I figured it out. Um, I picked it up, and for some reason, you know, when, when I was dicking around with Oscar and Alex and Pete at the time, I showed up to him. We were warming up, maybe sound checking or something. Showed him the chords and I played the lead and pretty soon we were incorporating it into the set list. And uh, it's just an instrumental bit. And I only learned the first little section of this song. And that's what we've been doing live is just the first section. And we just repeated a couple times. And uh, <laughs> maybe because it's, it's, you know, just the two sections and maybe because it's just an instrumental tune. Um, the guys started getting a little silly with it. They started throwing in some dance moves and stuff. And so it, it just became this goofy, fun thing that we like to do. Um, so I thought it'd be kind of fun for this live stream to learn the rest of the song. <laughs> We've been playing it for years, I mean years, and have never like done the rest of the song. Basically the part that we do is just the intro. And then there's like all these verses, you know, that we never did. So I thought, what the hell, uh, I'll, I'll, I'll wing it and um, I'll play the whole song for you. So this is, uh, again, this is a tune by Gaelic Storm. And uh, you've if you've seen Dig Deep, you've probably seen us doing it. You've probably seen Alex and Oscar doing their high kicks and little whew, bring it around, SpongeBob, SquarePants moves. Um, but it is... Uh, Oh yeah, Jim says Gaelic Storm two nights two nights at Big Top this summer. Oh man, if they if they do have a Big Top, that's true. Um, Joe, how you doing, man? Good to see you. Uh, I hope they do, and if uh, if they got Gaelic Storm up there for two nights, man, that's gonna be. I think that's one of those shows. If you look at the Big Top Chautauqua schedules, they have like <laughs> they have a little icon or something next to certain shows throughout the year, and it's like a dance warning. Like, warning, people will be getting up out of their chairs, dancing in the aisles, it's going to get rowdy. So if you're not into that, go sit in the back or something like that, you know. And Gaelic Storm always has a little dance warning, so. This one, it's a moonshine and song, it's called Hills of Connemara. 
second half of that song oh all right molly how you doing good to see you cheers oh man well thank you guys again for tuning in and joining me joining me um i uh i've been having a lot of fun with this man i think i um you know Hopefully we'll get back out there soon gigging and uh, this won't be a necessity uh, <laughs> for my own sanity like it is right now. Um, but honestly, I've been talking with my buddy Scott, uh, Scott Kirby, who I do the Wednesday live streams with and, um, and, you know, talking with a lot of other musicians and people in the music industry right now. And I think this live streaming thing, it's going to continue to be a part of the mix, you know, of, uh, of what musicians do um, it's going to continue to be a part of the business formula. It'll continue to be a good tool for, for staying in touch and, and, and hanging out with people and, and sharing songs. Um, so I, you know, I, it's, it's not ideal, but at the same time, I'm really having fun with it and I'm really excited for the, the possibilities. And I think it'll continue to be a thing into the future. You know, I could totally see once we get back out there and we're gigging again, um, I can still see doing one of these every couple weeks or something like that, just to kind of show you. It's like the little behind the scenes look. You can see, you know, you come out and see a show, and that's like the finished product. Those are the songs we've we've worked on and gotten together, and you know, that's um, that's the end product. But here, this can be kind of the thing where I show you the new stuff that we're working on, or maybe I can show you this stuff that wouldn't fit into the live show necessarily, or doesn't fit with this project or that project or whatever. But I can show you some of the stuff that's just been inspiring me lately that's kind of, and that's kind of how i'm putting together these songs you know this is just stuff that um 
stuff that I love, stuff that has been inspiring me lately, stuff that used to inspire me, um, that kind of informs the music that, that I make now with my different projects. So, um, I love the format, you know, for what it is, I guess. Um, and, and hopefully it's cool for you guys, you know, if, uh, if you're not able to go out and see shows, this allows you to, to enjoy some music and kind of stay connected with, you know, with the, the bands and stuff that you like. And, um, as always, we appreciate the support from all of you guys. Thank you. Not, and not just, you know, tips and stuff like that, but just the support of being here. You know, this is, um, it means the world. I keep on saying it. I cannot say it enough. Thank you guys. This, this does mean a lot. Um, and make sure you guys are checking out all the other live streams that musicians are doing. There's so many, so many players are doing this right now and it's super cool. Um, so that's, um, on that note, um, that's kind of what I'm trying to do with Northwoods Live. So I'm, I'm trying to keep up to speed and just sharing as much of those live streams as I can. Um, posting a schedule every week of, of what you have to look forward to throughout the week. And these are just the ones that I know of. These are just the ones that I've heard about. Um, so if, if you know of some, if you're a musician or artist that is doing stuff, drop me some links. I want to keep adding to that. And I add, add to it throughout the week. Um, so check out Northwoods Live if you haven't already. That's where I'm streaming this video from. And um, yeah, check out some of these live streams. Just support them. Everybody's got a different way of doing them. And everybody kind of approaches the medium differently, which is one of the really cool, exciting things about it. Um, our friend Teague Alexi, I love his live stream that he's been doing. Teague Alexi um, used to play with a band called the Hobo Nephews of Uncle Frank, he and his brother. Um, and he does live stream every single morning. Every single morning at like, you know, between 8 or 9 o'clock, he'll do a short live stream for maybe, you know, 45 minutes or something like that. And he'll play a few songs and he tells a few stories. He's also a writer, so he, he writes, you know, poetry and prose and short stories, kid stories. Um, but his whole thing in the morning is, it's just a kind of good little program to start your day with, you know, it's not like a, a big, long entertainment program or anything like that. He's not putting on a big show. It's just like, Hey, how you doing? He calls it tea with Teague, you know? And I love that. And that's just one of the many takes, um, one of the many approaches that, that musicians are doing right now with these live streams. So check out the Northwoods live page, <clears throat> excuse me. And, um, yeah, check out some of these other live streams. I know, uh, I think the White House players are doing one right after me. They're starting at 7, I believe. The White House players um, are, uh, check them out. It's good stuff. Some good friends. Uh, Charlie Strong, the, the guy that plays bass with them, has been a big help in, uh, <laughs> get, in um, giving us some feedback and technical support, if you will, with some of the video end of things in, over next door here at, at Scott Kirby Studio. So check those guys out for sure. All right. This next song here, this is a special one for, for me and I think for a lot of my friends. Um, this is a song that, uh, it's one of my favorite songs by one of my favorite songwriters. And the guy just happens to be one of my best buddies and one of the guys that I've played music with for the longest. Um, Phil Wickham. I'm sure a lot of you guys know him. If you guys don't know him, go check him out. I mean, you're you're just messing up if you don't know Phil. And you like live music and and uh, if you're in the Northwoods, you, I'm sure you know him already. He's he's friends and and family with like half the people in this northern part of the state. I'm pretty sure. So, uh, but but Phil was um, like I said, I've been playing music with him longer than just about anybody. Um, he was. Uh, we were bandmates. We we formed Ghost of Swine Town, which was my first string band. This was the first band that I ever played mandolin in, um, here in my hometown of Rhinelander. And uh, at that point, I I was I wasn't really writing a lot of songs, and so most th this was the first band I I I'd had that um, we the first band that really got outside of my hometown. You know, this I I played in bands before and played in basements and garages and house parties and stuff like that in high school. And then I had like a bar band that I did, you know, for a couple of years that, uh, eventually kind of evolved into Ghost of Swine Town, I guess. But Ghost of Swine Town was the first band that we really started writing songs, you know, writing original tunes, playing them out, building a fan base in the hometown, and then taking the show on the road, 
playing festivals, playing other venues in other towns. I'd never done that before, Ghost of Swine Town. And so that was like really a big one for me that kind of got me on this trajectory of string band music, you know, and so on and so forth. We got to open up for 357 String Band. I have that poster hanging on my wall. Like, no lie, that was that was a big one. Um, but yeah, Phil was was uh, one of the primary songwriters in this band, and he had just started writing, you know, writing, playing all this stuff too. We were all we were all super green, but his songs were so good, and it just I think without without his songs, Mike Hill was was another was the other guy in the band. He wrote great songs too. Um, but I, I think what I always loved about Phil's songwriting and what still just amazes me, and I have so much respect for him for this reason, he's just, he's one of those songwriters who I kind of put him in this, in the same camp as, as like John Prine, because he can say so much with so few words and such simple language. And that's something I've always envied. Like the last song that I wrote that was actually recorded and released was like 11 minutes long. It took me that long to, to get to the point, you know, and Phil can just like cut right to the quick with, with just the, the most simple language in the, in the, he just, it's a talent that not a lot of people have. I think a lot of songwriters like me, we get too worried, you know, I'm still, I'm still sitting here talking, you know, like get to the point, <laughs> but Phil just, he writes beautiful, beautiful songs that just you know, just get right to the point, you know, and, and that's one thing I've always loved about him. And this song in particular, this, this is one of my favorites because it's, a, it was, you know, it's a beautiful song. It's in its own right, but it became something more, um, because of, I guess, well, it's, a, you know, it's his, it's a song last request. That's the one I'm going to do. And a lot of you guys, um, know the song cause you've seen Phil, you've seen us play it with him. Um, and it's about getting to the end. It's about uh, when you when you pass on. Play me some bluegrass at my funeral when I die, you know. And um, it's uh, you know over the last few years we've lost some friends. Uh, we've lost some friends uh, who who passed on early, and it was it was sad and it was tough for for our, our, our circle of friends. Um, and you know, we played this song at events to, to celebrate the met, you know, the lives and the memories of these friends. And since then the song kind of takes on new meaning. And, um, I think in those circles of friends, it's really, really special to us. Um, and it's, you know, I mean, to me, I can't speak for anybody else, but I think it's probably safe to say that this song has kind of attained that status and that level of one of those songs that just means a ton to you and to your friends because of um, what you, what it's been through with you, you know, in the way that songs can kind of be with you through life experiences. This is one of those, <clears throat> one of those songs that has helped us, you know, through life experiences and has been there with us through some of these life, life experiences. So, I thought it'd be appropriate. I thought it'd be kind of cool to play this one. And this is one that we did with, with Ghost of Swine Town back in the day. And that Phil still does. Um, Phil streams every Thursday. So check him out, Phil Wickham. Every Thursday he streams from his living room. And uh, you don't want to miss it, man. Don't, don't sleep on Phil Wickham. Last request. <laughs> I 
Quest, Phil Wickham there. I love that song, man. And I love Phil. Phil, like I said, he's he's I'm I'm uh I'm fortunate and 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 uh blessed to to call him a friend and he's he's been been one of my best friends for so many years. I been through been through thick and thin with that song bitch and man I love him. So make sure you guys check out Phil Wickham's Thursday night live stream. He plays every Thursday, streams from his uh, from his living room there, and and again, just one of the one of the best songwriters I know, hands down. And just uh, I can't say enough about him, man. I miss I miss you, Phil, and I miss playing with you, buddy. We gotta we gotta get through this and um, get out there again soon. Oh, Kayla wants to hear Clowns and Brown. Well, I tell you what. Maybe I can put that one together for um, for my next solo live stream. Maybe uh, in another in another two weeks. I think um, that's kind of what I'd like to do. Um, I think for uh, for my solo live streams, I'm doing every Wednesday with Kirby. Um, every Wednesday at five, 
And I think for the solo thing, I like doing it every two weeks. I think that gives, just because I'm kind of new to this whole solo thing. I've never really done a lot of, you know, I, I've never really done any solo performance before. Um, so I just, I don't have a lot of material to draw from. So ha doing them every two weeks gives me enough time to put together some new songs for you guys. So uh, tune in again in a couple weeks and maybe we can do some Clowns and Brown. Uh, for those of you guys that don't know, that's another old Ghost of Swine Town song that Phil wrote. Another one of those that's just like so perfect and so simple and, and so just, it's it's a perfect song. It's just like, why didn't I think of that, you know? But that one, I think, I think pr that one I could, I could safely say that song, Clowns and Brown, kind of put us on the map locally anyway, because um, <laughs> it's a song he wrote. Um, full of true stories about interactions with the uh, Oneida County Sheriff's Department, who they, uh, at the time, they wore brown uniforms. Um, brown was the color of the Oneida County Sheriff's Department. And um, we've, uh, I think, I think running in, running into the cops in this town was kind of a rite of passage. I think all of us have been to jail, so <laughs> that's... <laughs> that, that song is stories of all of our little mishaps with local law enforcement um as as kids growing up in the north woods so um maybe we'll dig that one out for uh for our next go around but yeah again check out phil wickham make sure you guys do that um and check out his uh his live stream and again while i'm doing the shout outs um check out bill's bar i want i want you guys to go if you haven't followed his, his social media pages yet, um, go check it out. Um, Bill's a really good friend. Um, he has great food, you know, so I'm not just like, I'm not just telling you to go there to, to fart around. Like, go there and get some food. It's, it's, it's good food. Bill does it right. Um, it's cheap. He's got a drive-up window. It's right in between Maryland and Anago. So if you're in that neck of the woods, um, that's your spot. And I think more importantly, Bill has always been a tremendous supporter of of musicians of live music um he's, it's his bar is tiny it's a, it's but it's one of my favorite bars to to play at hands down because he's done such a good job over the years of cultivating a crowd that gets live music they show up to hear you know good original live music you know you're not you'll, you'll hear you'll hear the occasional goofy request play Bird, you know some 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 jag off just giving you shit but um, by and large, the people that show up to Bill's Bar are just awesome folks, and they're music fans, and they love good original music. They love to be surprised. They love to see stuff they've never seen before. Um, and if they see something they like, they're huge supporters, and they'll buy the merch. They'll buy the CD. They'll buy the T-shirt and all that kind of stuff. Um, and Bill has just been a huge supporter. You know, Booking bands uh, that are touring through that need a stop, he's always helping them out, always taking really good care of us. Even when it means he's not necessarily making a lot of money on the night, you know, which is big, especially when you're running a small a small bar like that. The margins aren't big to begin with, you know, and he's always taking such good care of the musicians. So, thank you, Bill. Uh, check out Bill's bar. Um, and I I could honestly say all that stuff ditto for my friends at Birchwood. Um, I gave them a shout out earlier, and I'd like to do another one again because that's one of those bars. Birchwood is in Rhinelander. And that's another one of those places. They do amazing food. They're doing the carryout thing right now. They they do Friday fish fries. That's you know that's just awesome. They do it right. Um, and again, that's it's it's a group of people that I love dearly and have just always always taken such good care of um, of the musicians and have worked hard to really cultivate live music um, where they're at. So. Birchwood and Rhinelander, big shout out to those guys. Check them out. Um, what is next here? Songs, I think. Oh, I'm gonna play you. I'll play one I writ. Speaking of Bill's Bar, shout out to to Bill Roble, who coined the phrase "play when you writ." That's why I love Bill's Bar. You play at Bill's Bar. That's the request that you're going to hear getting shouted at you from the barroom. Play one you writ! So I'm going to play you guys one I writ. This one 
This one is part of a collection of songs. I'm I'm starting to kind of I got a handful of songs that I've that I've been uh, have been in various stages of completion. I'm kind of starting to finish up now, and uh, I'm starting to notice that they, that they kind of have this theme going on of uh, that I, I think you could kind of loosely tie to winter in the north. You know, the winters are long, they're cold, they're harsh, they're they're tough, and uh, if you've been through a northern winter. You know what I'm talking about, and you can probably relate to some of these uh, um, these themes that I'm seeing starting to pop up in these songs. Um, and I'm, I've been kind of using these songs as a way to explore some of those themes uh, that relate to winter in the north of um, loneliness, depression, isolation, even exploring it a little bit deeper into the realms of, you know, madness, addiction craziness and you know, all that kind of stuff so it's been kind of fun using these songs to to kind of explore those themes and go in those directions a little bit um so i'm gonna play a, a, a few for you here I have, I have three original songs i'm gonna play for you here that i wrote um and i, I feel like the, the the first two the third one's just an instrumental number i'll tell you about that one when we get to it but the, the first two here definitely kind of um I think are, are touching on that the theme of um, winter, I guess, and, and the experience of a northern winter. So um, not necessarily autobiographical, but uh, taking experiences from, uh, you know, from my life and from my own experiences of the northern winter and kind of um, using them to examine those themes through the eyes of a character, if that makes sense. So... This one's called All the Things. <laughs> things that is uh i've been working on that one for a while and i i don't know if it's done yet uh, you know it's it's one of those that like i've been i've been toying with it for for quite a while and i wanted to share with you guys because it's it's at a point where I, I felt like i could share it but 
there still might be some arranging going on in that one. We'll see. All right. How are you guys doing? You guys hanging in there? Staying hydrated? Pour another one. Make it tall. Cheers. Thank you guys again for joining me. I appreciate you so much. Super happy to be playing for you tonight. Holly, what's up? Scott, love you. So glad to have you guys here with me. I appreciate it. Um, let's see. I'm trying to remember. Is there anything I wanted? Uh, you know, all the tips and stuff like that. And you can see where the you know the the links are for that. I appreciate any tips and donations um, that you guys feel inclined to drop my way. But again, don't don't feel you know obligated or, or pressured or anything. I'm just I'm I'm super happy to have you guys here hanging out with me. So thank you, thank you, thank you, thank you. All right, let's see. All right, let's play this other one I writ. Get myself tuned up here real quick, like. So, uh, who's excited for a uh, fishing opener tomorrow, huh? I got my plans. My brother's back. My brother's back in the U.S. I've not, I, I got to see Jake the other day. He stopped by and I, my brother has, uh, he's been living in New Zealand for, uh, for a very long time. I haven't seen him for about a year, so. He's back in the States and I'm super happy. That he's uh, that he made it safe and sound. It's a scary time to be traveling, of course, right now. But he unfortunately didn't really have much choice. He had to get back, of course, because of uh, how things are going. Um, so I'm thrilled that he's back, and I think uh, I might have to talk him into into doing some fishing with me tomorrow. We'll see. Keeping it safe with all the social distancing, of course, but um, my plan is to just do some shore fishing. So we're not going to be in a boat. You know, we don't have to take a car together. Like, I think we can, uh, we can make this happen. I went out on the river the other day and just the walleye fishing was lights out. It was insane. It was so cool. <laughs> all right. This next one, this is, uh, again, this is, this is a song that definitely kind of uh, works on that winter theme a little bit. Um in uh, probably a more dramatic fashion. I, this is uh, um, this is definitely one of those ones that I, 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 I took in the, the dramatic direction and, and really tried to um, see it through the eyes of a, of a, of a character, I guess. So um. <laughs> it kind of reminds me, I'll, I'll tell this story real quick and then, and then I'll get to the song. It, it reminds me in my band Dig Deep, uh, we have a song called Desire to Decapitate. It's a dark one. It's heavy. It's it's a pretty brutal song about fantasizing about cutting a guy's head off. You know, I mean, <laughs> straight up. it's <laughs> That's what it's about. And we played this song at a festival a while back. And, you know, I think to fans of us, uh, you know, fans and friends that know us and get us, it, a song like that makes sense, you know, because... We like, we like, you know, delving into the dark and the spooky and, and everything like that. And we don't take it too seriously. You know, it's stuff that we like to explore um, artistically and just because it's fun, you know. And, and the art that we grew up on, the art that we love, you know, we grew up on, on dark, heavy music and stuff like that. So we just like, we get off on, on, on exploring those themes a little bit. And uh, we played this music festival and this, this dear old lady came up to uh, one of us, I think it was... Oscar, it wasn't me, it was Oscar Alex, came up after our set, and she was really sweet, but basically she was like, I really liked you guys, but that song about, you should never play that song about cutting a guy's head off, ever, that's, we don't, you don't, you shouldn't be putting that bad energy out there for people, that's just so much bad energy, and I'm like, <laughs> sorry, I get, I mean, thanks for listening, but... You obviously don't get it, you know? Not all art is supposed to make you feel good. Art is supposed to make you feel something. You know, it's supposed to elicit a, a reaction. It's supposed to make you feel something. It's supposed to make you experience something. 
what that experience is depends on what the artist intended. It's not always going to be positive vibes and, you know, sunshine and rainbows. Some of, my, some of my favorite art takes you in a dark place. It explores dark places and dark feelings. And it doesn't mean that we support that. It doesn't mean that we want you to feel bad. We want you to feel dark and angry or, you know, like you're, you're not encouraging decapitation, you know. Um, but it just kind of like illustrated that like, you know, everybody listens to music differently. And some people go to a concert because they want to feel good. They want to feel upbeat and they want to hear those happy songs, you know, and, and sometimes we just let those people down a little bit because we like to, we like those, those songs too, but sometimes we like to explore the dark side of things a little bit. So this next song is me exploring the dark side of that cold, you know, um, isolated winter you know and um <laughs> i almost feel like i ought to do like a trigger warning right now for anybody that's like you know all of us that are uh dealing with isolation and quarantine right now you know it's i i've, I've been working this song out and, and singing some of these lines i'm like oof, that kind of hurts right now <laughs> you know like <laughs> it's a little too real but i wrote this song when i was you know living on my own experiencing a dark cold winter out in the woods all by myself and i was just you know i was enjoying it but i was really trying to dive into that that dark headspace and kind of explore the you know the extreme so um that's what that's what this one is all about and uh i call it cold lullaby <clears throat> one more sip of water before i get this one going I'm not used to doing all this singing and talking. When I play live, I <laughs> I don't have to say much. So I appreciate you guys bearing with me. What do you do? What do you feel when the night is long? Where do you go at that weary hour? What do you see when the light is gone? Your own voice. 
clock stops turning Do you feel the stillness Grip you from within As the embers fade And the cold comes whispering Does that shrouded stranger Darken your door all right cold lullaby obviously still working on that one too i goofed up a little uh a couple verses there but that is um yeah that's that's one of those those songs that was really fun to write because you get to get into that dark, spooky headspace and kind of it, explore the um, the reaches of the psyche that you try not to touch on in everyday life. So that's uh, that's what that one's all about. And I had this idea. I um, I imagine like for for some reason, and and maybe this this helps like. Um, make sense of the song in your head. This when I, when I was like putting this song together, I envisioned, like, I envisioned it going with a comic book. You know what I mean? Like that's the kind of art that I imagine going with this song. If that makes sense, like, you know, I don't ha imagine ever making like a, a a music video per se. But if I were gonna make a music video, it would be like, um like Sin City or something like that, you know? And and that's like, especially that last scene in the song, you know, the dark and strange, or the uh, the shrouded stranger darkening your door again. I just imagine this, this the main character is like, kind of just going crazy in his in his house all, all alone all winter. And he's just losing his mind, you know? And, and then he sees, he sees the shadowy figure that, is it death? Is it just his imagination? I don't know. But that's kind of where I was coming from with that one. Thank you guys so much. I'm uh, reading some comments here. <laughs> Jake, thanks, man. Like I said, my brother Jake just came back from New Zealand and he had to stop by and, and pick up some of his stuff that I've been stashing here. And he's like, hey, can I get that guitar back? And I was like, ooh, yeah, about that. Uh, this, that's, this is Jake's guitar. Um, I don't have a steel string guitar at the house that, uh, you know, that's, that I've been, uh, or this is the one that I've been using. It's the, it's the nicest one that I have sitting around at the house. And he's been kind of, kind enough to let me hang on to it for a little bit because I was like, I kind of need it. I've been working on these songs and I need it for the live stream and I want to do some recording and stuff like that. And he, he's, uh, being very kind to let me hang on to this, especially when he sees how badly I beat it up. <laughs> so thank you Jake I appreciate that very very much um, this next one here is uh, I'm gonna do another original for you guys here um, this one's just an instrumental tune just some some riffs that I kind of put together um, and the reason I did this one and kind of where it came about in Rhinelander my hometown Rhinelander Wisconsin um, yeah, the the town is built around uh, a flowage of the Wisconsin River. There's a dam in town at the paper mill. And so the whole town is kind of built around the Wisconsin River flowage here. Uh, Boom Lake is part of the flowage. And there's a uh, kind of a famous waterway on this on this flowage called the Peggy Slough. <clears throat> and there's like all these songs called Peggy Sue. I was like, I want to make a song called Peggy Slough. It's kind of a, kind of a little backwatersy um, corner of, of the flowage that, uh, legend has it has produced some trophy muskies, uh, over the years. Um, so I was like, man, I want to, I want to write a song and just call it Peggy Slew. I didn't, I didn't know even what I was going to make it the song about, but I was like, all right, Peggy Slew, I'm making a song about it. So I started banging out some riffs and this is, uh, this is what I imagine it sounds like when a muskie's cruising through the coontail about to get some <laughs> or something. I don't know. Peggy Slew. Hold on. 
Let's tune up real quick, girl. Peggy Slew. Slew. All right. Cooster, thanks, brother. Appreciate it, man. Yeah, that's a um, that's a fun one I've been messing around with, and that's one I uh, I really I'm excited to um, to get out of this quarantine so I can I can bring some of these songs. Um, bring them to the boys, bring them to the dig deep boys and, um, get everybody working on this stuff. You know, I've, um, 
as much as the quarantine has sucks, as much as it has sucked, it has definitely lit a fire under my ass. And I've, you know, a lot of these songs that I've been sitting on for a long time, um, that have, you know, been almost finished or little bits and pieces, I've, I've been making a lot of progress on them. Um, so it's, it's been really cool. It, it has kind of given me a little, a little, uh, kick in the pants, um, that I needed. And, uh, so I've got a lot of stuff. I got a lot of material. And I, as soon as I get out of here, I can't wait to bring this stuff to the table and, and show Alex and Oscar and Aaron, um, and start, start putting together some of this stuff and hear what some of these songs could sound like with a full band. Um, I'm, uh, that, that being one of them, I, I, I have ideas in my head of, of where we could go with it and what it would sound like with a full band. And especially some of these songs, like the last two, especially that, that have, um, a m more of a dynamic range, you know, they get soft and then they get loud. And that's kind of, that's one thing I really like about, um, about playing with those guys is, is they're, they're really good with like bringing it up and bringing it down and just make, making a song like that sound heavy, you know? And I miss that. I miss that a lot. I miss I miss Oscar headbanging over there on the banjo, you know. So hopefully we'll get out of here soon and uh, we can have some new Dig Deep songs. Thank you guys again so much for hanging out. I'm having a great time. I appreciate y'all. Every single one of you guys. I got a couple more here for you. Um, I'm going to do... Uh, I got two more songs. And... Um, I'm just, I'm just trying to remember if there's anything else I wanted to mention or uh, throw out there. Um, again, I just I, I hope you guys are, are checking out some of these other live streams that, that other musicians are doing. Um, and I hope you guys are also supporting um, the bars and you know restaurants that have supported musicians and, and been host to, uh, to live music over the years, like Birchwood, like Bill's Bar, Monaco Brewing Company is another one. Um, a lot of these places, you know, they're, they're making a, they're making a go of it, but it's not easy for them right now. So any little bit you can do if, um, if you're looking for a good Friday fish fry or something, consider, um, one of these places that has been so good to us musicians. I, I, you know, it's, it, this whole thing is heartbreaking, but I, I cannot stress enough how it, how, uh, how these venues, how these restaurants and bars have supported us, you know. They've literally, quite literally, you know, put food on our tables and taken such good care of us over the years. And I, uh, I just, if there's any way that you guys can um, support them, I think that'd be a, a great thing to do. If you're able, of course. All right. I'm going to do a song here by an artist that I was just so looking forward to seeing at Mountaintop this year, my music festival that I throw at Indian Head Resort up in Upper Michigan in March. I had to cancel it. It was like right as all this stuff was going down. I had an awesome lineup put together. I was so excited. And this guy, Possessed by Paul James, was going to be there. He's just hands down one of my favorites. Um, if you guys haven't seen him, check him out. Possessed by Paul James. He's a one-man show, and he makes more noise and puts out more energy than than like a you know a full five-piece, six-piece band ever could. He's just such a tremendous energy, and he's such a cool guy. I mean, he's just the the kindest, most down-to-earth dude. Great songwriter. Um, but I I wanted to see him so bad, and I didn't get to and. Oh, he also does some really cool live streams, so make sure you check that out. But I wanted to do a Possessed by Paul James song just because, just because. I missed seeing him. I love his songs. I love his energy. And uh, I love this song. of an earlier time Memories of ladies now they're far behind Too many lovers makes a heart go blind Oh, I should have known better I was so foolish and I chased the sun Young ones are fine the time with days are done Too many lovers makes you want to run Oh, I should have known better Well, I 
tried too hard. I spoke too soon. I got too drunk and I shot the moon. All the while, I look at you and you'd say, Oh, you should know better, baby. Oh, you should have known better, baby. Oh, you should have known better, now, baby. Now I do. Oh, baby, yes, I do. I jump from rooftops both far and wide. Drop the kisses and I rob the blind Leaving lovers in a better life Oh, I should have known better I was a lion tamer long ago A veteran in the yard of fooling ghosts Much too lonely for their hearts to know Oh, I should have known better Well, I tried too hard I spoke too soon I got too drunk and I shot the moon My wife, she left me back in 94. I should have known better. And as I sit within my shallow grave, looking for answers, all I should have saved. Just out of heaven's reach, amazing grace. I should have known better. Well, I tried too hard. I spoke too soon. I got too drunk and I shot the moon. Known better possessed by Paul James. Thank you guys. All right. Oh man. Well, thank you guys again so much for joining me for this. I had a great time playing songs with you guys. I'll be back in another couple weeks. I think I'll uh, let's do it again, man. I'll be back um, every Wednesday with my good friend Scott Kirby. Uh, check out Scott Kirby Music. On Facebook, he's got a YouTube channel and stuff like that, and um, he has been working really hard. He's been putting in hours and hours of work getting our, our video live stream set up. So right now I'm just going off my phone in my living room here, but um, right next door here on the other side of this wall um, is is the studio, and uh, he's um, been fine tuning that setup and it, he's got it dialed in. It's, it sounds good. It looks really good. Um, we've got you know mics for for all the the channels and stuff like that. So it's um, a much more high quality production. Um, so, uh, you can check that out on Wednesdays. Again, uh, check out my buddy Phil Wickham on Thursdays. I'll be back in two weeks. I, I'll, I plan on doing this every other Friday. Um, so keep an eye out, follow the Northwoods live page, um, for, for all the live streams. And, um, I'm going to finish it on a gospel song. I did, I did this last week. I, I, I learned a song. Um, the, the one I learned last week I learned from my mom because this one she used to sing to us when we were babies. Um, and I, I just, I don't know. I, I've, never, I've never been a, a church goer or Bible thumper or anything like that, but I've, I've always loved um, gospel songs and spiritual songs and stuff like that. Um, and I really think no matter, no matter what your faith or your beliefs are, the themes of you know, um, redemption, freedom, love, kindness, etc. Those are universal. Um, and 
I think, um, you know, personally, I, I, I love, I love that, that, um, that whole, uh, genre, that whole body work. And I, you know, I, I draw inspiration from it and I, they've always, the songs have kind of struck a chord with me for whatever reason. And, uh, not to mention they form a, you know, part of the bedrock that, that makes up country music and bluegrass music, of course. Um, and, uh. Yeah, this uh, this particular song, it's not an old traditional or anything like that. This is a Hank Williams song. So this is one of my favorite um, favorite gospel songs, but it's also one of my favorite Hank Williams songs. And Hank Williams was one of my favorite singers, one of my favorite songwriters. So I figured I'd, I'd end on this one. And <laughs> I was going to try and finger pick this one. That was half the reason I had this one picked out, because I'm trying to learn how to do some finger picking. Very simple, very rudimentary at this point, but I was going to do it on my nylon string guitar. And... As I was working on some of these original songs on the steel string, I just banged up my finger really bad, so I can't like I can't use that for picking right now. So I got a flat picket, um, but we're gonna do a little. I saw the light to send you out. And again, thank you guys um, for anybody that's uh, sent in tips and donations. I can't thank you enough for that. That is so, so appreciated. Um, and thank you guys if, if you've just tuned in and hung out for a little bit too. I, I appreciate you all. So um, It's been a really, really fun time for me and I, I, uh, I hope we get to do it again soon. That was kind of weird how that ended. I didn't do nothing. That was really weird. Okay. Give me one second here. I'm going to keep going here. Well, 
Actually, no. I'm going to take a half hour break. Um, I'll come back here at 8 o'clock. So give me 28 minutes and I shall be back with Lowell Marie. Oh, here, why don't I do this so you can actually see who you're, who you're actually. There you are. Yes. So let me take a half hour break. I'll come back here at 8 o'clock. And I'll be doing uh, Low Marie with Kenny Lizer. Kenny, yeah, Kenny Lizer from Wheelhouse. So, short break, and I'll be back in about 30 minutes. Thanks for stopping.